Good morning. Let's do that. Good morning, everybody. It's a lovely Thursday. I've had a great sleep in today. My alarm kind of got accidentally snoozed slash intentionally snoozed. And so I did nothing this morning but sleep in. Um, don't know if it's beneficial for my work life balance, but it's definitely beneficial for my uh, catch up on sleep with a baby balance. So <laughs> I am very, very grateful for a few extra hours of sleep this morning um, and for a lovely partner that was able to see that I needed it and look after the little one and allow me to sleep. So that was fantastic. Um, I'm very grateful for family again. You know, um, it was my fiance's birthday yesterday and we had family over and just seeing Omar and play with my little man and just having people around and friends and the ability to, you know, just share the joys of life was just magical. Sometimes when we get caught up and um, carried away with our work, we sometimes forget about that balance, um, especially as a traveler who's sort of left home and left friends and family behind. We kind of get, I, I personally kind of get sucked into the, just into my work, into my trading, and then realize that it's been a couple of weeks since I've seen anyone. And then someone comes out and, you know, we catch up and it's, it's a really lovely time. So that is very, very nice to have. Um, please chuck in the chat some of your gratitude. I'm also grateful for some quality food we've had over the last couple of days, just good food and the ability to enjoy the the little things, you know. We were talking about the other day because both my partner and I have traveled to Africa and sometimes even though people don't have much, they still seem so happy. Um, and when I was in Borneo, I was driving through and there was torrential rains coming down. My partner and I were just talking about this just before. But I saw these kids playing in wheelbarrows of rain in the street and they were like the happiest people I've ever seen. And it's because they found like the joys of the smaller things and, you know, they didn't need all the luxuries to be extremely happy. And they were focused on each other and the families were just watching on and having a good laugh. And everyone just seemed so genuinely happy in that present moment. Um, and it's something that stuck with me forever. And it really brings light to the fact that we don't need all these luxuries and all these bits and pieces that we work so hard for, you know, like, yes, it's great. And yes, it's good to have ambition and dreams and goals, but don't chase them so hard that you get sucked away from what's right in front of you. And these things like family and these, these moments, like I know lots of people who, especially from being from Western Australia, there's lots of people who work really hard to provide for their family, but in doing so they're away from their family for so much like FIFO workers and stuff like that. And, you know, friends of mine who, who are great, great people and they work really hard. But, you know, when you're away for this, these periods of time, for me, my priority was to be here, even though I don't have millions of dollars to do all the things that being present is, is the more important thing for me. And this comes down to, you know, your why. And um, my why is my little man, as most of you know. And just that ability to be present in the moment. So I'm very grateful for that and understanding that, you know, we don't sometimes need all of these luxuries that we're chasing if we push them above being in the moment. And I always found myself getting caught in this loop. Like I, I'm spending so much time and energy trying to set up for my future so that I could spend time with my family. But I don't want to be doing that in lieu of spending time with my family right here, right now. Right, <laughs> right. So it's really important to understand and be grateful for those little things and just take a step back sometimes and just appreciate the moments now and the things you have around us and those we have in our lives and those precious moments. Um, you know, for me, having a newborn and just seeing the growth almost daily and being able to be here and watch every little day just grow and explore and something new coming along has been fantastic. And it's made me really just take a step back and go, you know what, this is what I'm living for, to be here now during these moments. Anyway, that's my little bit of gratitude for this morning. Um, I'm just going to check through the chats here. Got a lot of gratitude messages coming through, which I love. Grateful for my health, the food on my table, and the people in my life. Love it. Important to be grateful for this. some things. I think they mean small things or some things. I'm grateful for my health, for my family, and for this wonderful community. Grateful for my coffee this morning after a long night. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, I'm trying to wean myself off coffee because I never used to drink coffee with my partner became a barista and she got me onto coffee. And then I went two, three coffees by like nine o'clock. And especially once we had the little one and now I'm like, okay, I don't, I don't even really enjoy coffees that much. I got to wean myself back off of them. So now I have like one around 12 or one if I need it. Um, 
I'm grateful for the laughs with a great coworker this week. Love it. Makes the work days more enjoyable. Yeah, it's really good to have good good relationships in all areas. And that's actually something that I'll probably start talking about next week is relationships. Grateful for Leah and Amy. It was like you're in my head with thoughts and mistakes in trading. I'm not alone. It was a great call last night. Oh, yeah, I hope that went well. Girls, I um, obviously it was 2 a.m. in the morning for me, so it was a little bit hard for me to get to that, but I hope it went well. I'm sure there's lots of great fire coming out of that that chat with you two. Both have so much value to provide. So anyone who missed that, I'm assuming there's recordings, and I'm sure you can tell us all about that a bit later. Brilliant, Amy. Da -da -da. Grateful for the good sleep that I have been getting this week. Love it. Reading your gratitude made me smile just thinking about how amazing a good laugh is. Yeah, nothing like a good belly laugh. I'm so grateful for you too, Aaron. Thank you so much. It means so much that we brought value to you. Thank you, Aaron, for joining and participating. I'm grateful for my health, family, warm home, food in the fridge, freezer, enjoying each day. Yeah, babies are such good teachers at how to live in the moment. Yeah, right? Yeah, should have been grateful for the small things. <laughs> Can be grateful for some things and small things. Grateful for opportunities to grow and the adventurous life I am in. Nothing like an adventurous life. I love it. I'm all for adventure and exploration, although um, since I've had my little man, I've had to be okay with settling a little bit more, which is actually quite nice. All right, so usually on Thursdays, we do hear from Deanna, who's had a lo lovely couple of weeks um, with uh, some great insights and some meditations. But as we've been speaking at our why this week, and um, I believe a lot of people got a lot of value from yesterday, thanks to Christine for sharing and being so open. Um, we had a couple of other people who were willing to participate in this um, exercise. And um, Deanna, suggested, Deanna suggested that um, we continue this exercise through the week, which I think is great. So we're going to do that for today and tomorrow. We're going to go through another seven levels deep um, exercise. Today, we'll be going through with Erin. So I'll get her to join us in just a second. Um, but yeah, while we're on this why, I'd like you to think about, you know, your whys. I don't know if anyone, chuck some ones in the chat if after yesterday you went and sort of did a little bit more deeper thinking or even went through the exercise or you've been on the website and done it done it there. Okay, cool. couple of people. Nice, nice. Awesome. So a few people going through and getting a bit more involved. That's great. So obviously everyone's different, but I feel like there are a lot of common factors and beliefs and values that we live by and things that happen to us that can sort of stem through each other so i know a lot of people found a lot of relativity in Kristen's story um and so as we go through today maybe have a look and think like maybe you've gotten to a level that you think you're wise at but then we end up going deeper and maybe think for yourself okay how about for me? Like, can I go deeper on this? Like, does this question relate to me? Like, where else can I go with this? And try and find find if you can get to those real, real, real core levels. And sometimes people don't have a deepness that they they can get to. You know, not everyone has um, trauma or, or, you know, things that hold them, but it is very common for most people. And I think that um, the, the more honest we can be with ourselves and the more open we can be, the deeper we can get. So... I'm going to ask Erin if you are here. I think I saw your comments. So if you are here and you Hi, could... Jake. Perfect. All right. Um, just like we did yesterday, do you want to give us just a little bit? Now, you said in the chats you did some, had a one, you did, went through your why a little bit more. If you feel like you know what your why is, um, do you want to just share that with us and give us like a maybe like a four or five minute backstory of, you know, who you are and how you got into this journey? So I thought my why was to make money and, and change my life and change my kid's life and but judging by the way that I'm trading and and uh, my total disrespect for my capital my, my money I'm yeah. questioning that why okay so, <laughs> I work as a caregiver I've worked as a caregiver for about the last 14 years companion and caregiver for seniors and these last three years I've been living as a living caregiver for a woman with Huntington's and mm -hmm. so, you know, I walk people through to end of life and I'm, I'm tired of that. I'd like to do something different. Um, and, and now I think my why is, you know, when I got in this, got in, you know, I've been with IM for a couple of years. I've just, just lost another account with trading with Patrick. I just feel like I'm completely failing with, with that. 
that. So I'm thinking I'm just going to maybe quit IM and stick with three. So I really I'm a little bit confused right now. And, and so I guess now I'm thinking my why is just that I just need to get this. I'm just so frustrated with myself that like, why can I not get this? What's yeah. wrong with me? <laughs> well, first of all, there's nothing wrong with you. We've yeah. all been down that track. I've been down that track. And sometimes I still have days that I'm feeling the same thing. So to, oh, straight off the bat, there's definitely nothing wrong with you. This is a frustrating thing. And if anyone could do this, um, there'd be a lot more millionaires in the world and a lot more people who are doing it uh, full time, right? So this whole concept of trading is an extremely difficult process, but it has one with extremely, extremely incredible rewards. Unfortunately, the catch 22 here is the more frustrated and emotional you get with yourself, the worse your results are going to be on the charts. And it's just a loop. And I've found that I've had this with myself. You get super frustrated, then you're trading with emotion, then you take your your emotion out on your trades and that creates poor results. And then you go, why can't I get this? And you get more frustrated and you go back to the charts the next day with that built up frustration. And you go, why can't I get this? And you take it out on your trades and you just have this loop. And then you go, why is my account going down? Pulling out your hair. I have been there. It's very common. Um, and it's the ability to understand ourselves who we are and why we respond in this way that we can then catch that and go, hang on, I need to take a step back. Like I've had times where I can see my results just crashing and I'm like, I got to take a week off from the charts. I just pack it in for a whole week. And then I find by the end of that week, I'm like thinking about the charts. Okay. I want to get back on there. I'm calm now. I've, I've removed the emotion. It could even be subconscious emotion. That's just lingering where you think you might may have eradicated it, but really you've just reduced it from what it was yesterday. Right. And I feel like a lot of this emotion could be maybe due to your why. Um, and hopefully we can figure that out a little bit more in depth now. So I love that you're a caregiver. That's awesome. Um, however, I know it can be very difficult if you're in the hospital. You said in the hospice, right? Like taking people. I'm, I'm, I'm living in I'm living in um, their home. I'm living with the husband and wife um, in their home as a caregiver. And then I have my own place where my daughter is living. Okay. Um, so I'm supporting her with rent and things as well so no, okay yeah and usually that unfortunately in your line of work you see people through to the end don't you yes yeah and that can be something hard that a lot of people don't understand like I worked in a hospital for seven years and um, I saw a lot of people pass away in that time and after a certain amount of time it doesn't affect you as much and you, you understand that that's that is the natural course of life um, but it still is something that you can carry through with you so there could be something along those lines, obviously, that are, that are affecting your emotions on the, on the charts. But let's try and d dig a little bit more into um, the why and into this exercise, because I've taken up a bit of time now, unfortunately, but we'll get into it here. So your, your original, so what we're trying to do, and it's the same for Christine, is we're, we're trying to become successful traders, right? Yes. We want to do that because, and in your case, you initially said, because you want to make lots of money and change your life. Okay, so why is it important for you to have lots of money at this current moment in, in your life, do you think? Like, what would you do with that money? Because often people go, I want money. But the deeper aspect is, what would you do with that? So why is it important for you right now to have, let's say you got a million dollars tomorrow? You know, what would you do with it? Why is it important? You know, I, I'm single. My kids are, are grown. I, you know, I've, I was a single mom raising my children and um, now it's my time and I want to go, I want to travel and I want to be free. I want financial freedom. I want a bit of security. I grew up with a, with a, a poverty mentality. My father is probably the cheapest man on earth. He took great pride in being cheap mm -hmm. and, um, he didn't value girls as much as boys. So, you know, I grew up feeling less than, okay. so this whole last year I've done affirmations that one of the biggest things is that I am enough. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's important. Sorry, one second, just muting some people here. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I totally agree. So, so growing up with that poverty mentality and being a single mom, I mean, sure that would be hard. I cannot relate, but my, um, my partner grew up, with a single mom raising her. So I understand the concepts there and how, how it can be a bit more tough. But as you said, your dad um, being a proud, stingy man, um, though I have family re relations in that as well, 
you know, not understanding girls and feeling maybe a bit more like you're less. So I feel like this is something that could probably have the importance that now you now you feel like you deserve to stand up and show the world that you can and it's time for you to be spend your time as you said your kids are gone right or not gone but they're older shall we say and it's your time you you want to prove that you are enough and you want to be free and so I feel like there's a lot of balance in like why is it important for you to have that freedom or like that proof because you said one of your biggest affirmations is that you are enough and I think that's great because you are you definitely are but why is it important for you to have that do you think that feeling of you know being enough or making it just to be able to stand on my own two feet and just to be able to travel the world and you know my my ultimate dream is to take a couple of trades in the morning and then have my day free to, to do whatever I want and and be in whatever country I want and um yeah live live my life the way I want and do what I want on my schedule on your schedule yeah I think that's one of the key aspects is is I think for a lot of us it's on our schedule and I and I think that sometimes when we have had that feeling of let's say not like having to live under someone else's thumb or living by someone else's schedule or someone else's words right it can be frustrating and annoying and I think lots of our emotion comes from wanting to break free but then you know as you say if we're not making it or we're not um having the success we want then I think we still feel a bit restricted by that um and I think that that could be in relation to what you've been saying something that might be um quite a strong restriction for you is feeling like you haven't got that complete freedom yet because you know your dad was saying that you said that your dad felt like girls we're not, what is it didn't uh, undervalued girls i believe you said and so you're probably living a lot under his thumb in a sense and being a single mum you're not not as valuable thanks leah um and then being a single mum having to do it all on your own i think maybe you missed out on a lot of independence shall we say would, would that be fair to say yeah i think that would be fair to say and you know i you know i was out of the house at 17 and I've been on my own a long time, but I, I didn't feel ready to be on my own at 17. And I think I've carried that fear of not being able to look after myself. I've okay. always had that sort of, you know, that um, it's been survival for so many years. And, and in this caregiving job where I am now, I feel like I've had a bit of a break from survival mode and I've actually been able to live. Yep. And so you've actually felt that, that sort of, a bit of that freedom of, of, you know, yes. being able to live. So I think that's a quite important aspect, which you brought up there, like, you know, moving out of home early. I, I also moved out of home. Um, I think it was just as I turned 18, like very early. Um, and it does feel a bit like you're in that survival mode and you're always trying to just make ends meet and get by. And you don't really have that, like that break, shall we say. Um, and I'm sure that as you look after these people who are, you know, on their deathbeds and stuff like that. I'm sure you probably hear a lot about maybe some of their regrets and some of like the things that things that they've achieved as well. And some of their prouder moments, correct me if I'm wrong, but I know that lots of the time um, people in these positions often discuss that and they talk about things they wish they had have done maybe, which could be driving a little bit of uh, maybe enviousness or jealousy to, to things that, you know, you've got an option here, which has that freedom, but you just can't grasp it. Right. Right. And so I feel like growing up at a really young age and pushing out early um, in that survival mode, you probably never have that had that like real relaxing freedom to, to do as you wanted because you're just scraping by. So, I mean, I'm only relating this to something similar to me, um, but I'm guessing, you know, breaking out of that survival and having the freedom to do with what you want kind of comes from, from a bit more of like an independent standpoint like i am good enough i i can prove to the world that i can do these things would that be correct yes absolutely yeah so i think it's more of a self self pride thing which i think is completely uh, really respectful and maybe the importance of why you need to prove like usually when we're trying to break through a survival method it's like we're trying to prove to someone or the world that we are capable that we are good enough would there be anyone that maybe you could think of like why it would be important to prove to them, to someone else? 
um, that you're you enough? Know, really, it's really now, Jake, it's for myself because yep. I'm just so frustrated with myself that like you know I, I look at I look at this trading and I've got I even got the help of Janie yep and, I, and I'm like you know this this is simple like what is wrong with you that you're taking 22 trades like what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's, it's one of those things like I think because you want it so bad and I've been to this level um you know I have this part of me where I chose to turn down engineering which is a good paying job to go travel the world and now I have this feeling of I need to prove myself to those at home to those that I said no to you know to my parents who suggested to stick with engineering that I ha can find another way and that I can do this and I think we get stuck in this like loop of I need to prove it so bad that when I'm not proving it I get frustrated at myself and this is what I was saying at the start you kind of get stuck in this this loop of of frustration and then that responds to the charts and then you probably get agitated like you could have a good day of trading and i'm speaking purely from perfect um, personal experience here good day of trading it starts to go the wrong way and then you emotionally jump into your trades and it's just like the emotions take over yeah. really quickly and then you you look at the thing and you're like i was up by two percent and now i'm down by 15 percent. and 30 trades later what the hell am i doing i know that's the wrong thing to do right and i think this comes from I, I don't want to say ego in an offensive way, but also ego in the sense that I know I can do this. I'm right. I can make it. Why the fuck can't I make it? <laughs> like what? I know. And then, no, I can make it. And then your stubbornness comes in and you sort of take over. It takes over and then you lose um, quite drastically because the emotions control every bit of action and it's completely out of the logical brain. And then every time that happens, you pretty much lose. So what I'm getting down to understanding is maybe it's not so much about having the freedom of money and the freedom of time but as we've discussed further would it be fair to say that it's more important for you to have the pride in yourself of achieving something absolutely i think that's now where i'm at like i just i i need to prove to myself that i can be disciplined and um smart and capable and can do this yeah and so I feel and be like be successful. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I feel like that's important to you because you've been in survival mode, right? And because you've been trying to just like get by and you've done the mothering thing and now you're looking after other people and you, you feel like it's it's your time. So I feel like the your why is more about self-pride and, and that's completely perfect if you if you know that your why is is like self-pride and actually establishing some kind of thing that you're really proud of and if you can understand that then you when you find yourself going into these emotional swings of frustration and xyz you go hang on is this actually benefiting me like am i proud of this behavior or am i proud of this emotion and most of the time i can assume you're going to say no because <laughs> you're emotional right but if you know that that's why you want to make this not so much because you want the money, which is also a great benefit, but not so much because you want the freedom and the time, but because you're the reason that you made the freedom and the time and you're the reason that you made the money. And you can sit, look back and be proud of the fact that you accomplished that, right? I feel like that's probably more from what I'm understanding. Your true why is your own accomplishment and your own achievement. Would you agree or? That really resonates with me. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. I think so as we nailed it. Yeah, I think as we dive deeper here, it's like, yes, money's great. Finance is great. Travel's great. We all love that stuff. But this is like, lots of traders will say you have to leave your ego at the door. And I'm still trying to do that. Like, I didn't even think I had an ego. But the more I get dive into trading, I realize maybe I do. Like, there'll be trades that like, the reason I can't exit early is because I need one of our four fears of trading, which we we're talking about on Tuesday, the fear to be right. You know, the fear of being wrong, sorry. Like, I don't even think that I'm stubborn like that, but clearly the results on the charts are telling me that I am. And so we need to look and understand like if trading, the why that you're here is to prove to the rest of the world or to prove to yourself that you can do something, then we can take that and we can start to track our emotions and see, are we benefiting ourselves by doing this thing that we're doing right now? Are we benefiting myself? Like, am I proud of the way I'm behaving right now on the charts? Like my why is to prove to myself that I can do it and that I can be proud of accomplishing something so then everything we do we need to ask ourselves 
am I proud right now of this small little thing? Because the way we become proud of big accomplishments is being proud and happy with our small accomplishments continuously day in, day out. And if you're sitting there frustrated, which I've been there, don't worry. I've been to the days of going, why can't I get this? This is so shit. <laughs> Let me take it, take some, take some weight off your shoulders. Give yourself like a little rest and a break from it. And then come back and be like, you know what? Well done. You you did one, like award yourself for sticking to your plan. Like make your trading plan, give yourself the rules and then award yourself for sticking to those rules, regardless of the outcome of the charts. Because what that'll do is it'll build your pride of you accomplishing something bit by bit. And then that'll grow over time. And what will hopefully come with that is the results. So take your focus off the results and bring it into like yourself and like being proud of the little bits, find the gratitude and the little achievements and the baby steps. And that'll just grow into something without, without you even realizing it. Has that helped at all? Oh yeah. I know. I think, yeah. Thank you, Jake. Yeah. And you know, I guess the other thing is like, I'm trying to find grace and, and be compassionate and kind to myself because, you know, I do have good days yeah. and then I just have a shit day like yesterday Yeah. <laughs> and I just blow it off. So yeah. it's just forgiveness. The, the hardest thing is like when, and this is for all traders here, we can have three, four weeks of good days. But if we still have the ability to let those emotions take reins and just run havoc, it takes one day, one day to destroy three work, three weeks worth. So we have to become accustomed to noticing these shitty days or noticing when our emotions are coming up and just letting go and being like, fuck it, not today. <laughs> like, I'm not letting this one day of emotional trauma or this one day of the devil coming back and taking over to ruin the three weeks worth of work I've, I've had. That's the hard reality about trading if we like yes we have good risk management two percent here and there but what's the point in doing two percent trades if you do 17 of them with a full loss and you don't understand that okay maybe this isn't my day right so it's really important that we need to give ourselves the break accept the little accomplishments and be proud of them and over a period of time we can be proud of like the achievements we've done you know bit by bit and they will grow into something massive it's all about that small consistent results and just giving yourself a break. Like, don't be so hard on yourself. Like I'm very guilty of that. I, I push myself and push myself and I don't make it. And then I just beat myself up. And I'm like, what, why am I doing that? Like, look how far you've come. Like be grateful for the amount of distance and progress you have made and not be disappointed in the amount of growth and distance you feel you are still to make. So I know that in your, in your line of work and like lots of the time, people who are the happiest and smiling, sm smile the most are struggling the most. And lots of the time people who care and look after people the most look after themselves the least. And so I think you really need to like, just give yourself a break, you know, understand that you're doing this for the pride of you and that's your why for the achievement. And you need to, I think of like establish a boundary of things that will help you be proud of yourself for the small things and not be so disappointed when you haven't got the million dollar account tomorrow. Thanks so much, Jake. That's amazing. Thank you. No worries. I hope that can help. And feel free to message me anytime. I'm just going to flick through some of these. I know we're out of time here. So thank you very much, everyone. I'm just going to flick through some of these comments because I know there's a lot of them coming through um, on my list of projects to complete, to send more time going through my why. I have a really good start. Now wanting to go deeper, connect to more emotions. Exactly. Every day this call helps me think deeper. Perfect. Because my fingers are not working so well today. Above message should be to spend more time going through my why. There's nothing wrong with you. You're not alone. Yeah, that's important. Yes, keep small promises to yourself. And that that creates discipline. If you can, like, I am I go through stages where I'm really bad. I'll like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. It comes to the moment and then I don't do it. And then that is the more disappointing thing than me actually doing or not doing the thing I said I was going to do. The fact that I can't keep a promise to myself or I can't keep that discipline and just go through with what I said. And I think if we can start to do that on a regular basis, that's really going to start to shift um, how we see ourselves and how we feel. Thank you so much for being vulnerable and sharing with Erin. Yeah, thank you so much, Erin. It's not easy to come onto a group like this and open up and share your vulnerabilities and, and really talk through it like you have. So I really appreciate that. Um, and I really hope that today we've helped sort of just, you know, pull back some of those layers just a little bit deeper. And you may have further to go, you know, you may have more that you can dive into there, but I think this is just a really good start and a really good baseline. Maybe understanding why it's important for you 
to be right and why it's important for you to be proud of yourself. But I think, you know, as far as we've gotten is great. Wow, it's very powerful, Aaron and Jake. You can do this, Aaron. Aaron, thank you for doing your why with us. You are not alone. So good. Thank you for sharing, Aaron. You are not alone. So yeah, I think everyone's going through similar things, Aaron. So we really appreciate you sharing that. Thank you for thank you, Aaron, for including us in your trading journey to this point. You are not alone. Keep going. You are learning and growing. I am grateful to have virtually meet you all. It's a very special community, one that I do not ever want to take for granted because what we share isn't easy to find. I totally agree. Thanks for this. Thanks, Aaron. I can relate and have that same feeling. My why is similar, it seems. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Jake. I appreciate you. Thanks, Jake, for doing these why reviews. This has been really helpful. Perfect. All right, everyone. Well, that is that wraps up our time here. I've gone a little bit over time. So for our traders, quickly jump on over to our trading call. Tomorrow, we'll go through one more why to finish off our whys um, for Friday. Again, if we have more people that want it, we can maybe do like one a week going forward, or I can do some more personally if it's really helping people. So tomorrow we'll be on with one more why. Thank you very much. I'm going to love you all and leave you. And if you're catching this on the podcast, uh, hopefully we'll see you on the live call soon and you can grow with our community here. But for now, bye. Thank you. Bye.